This guitar uh, is special. It's actually on loan from my boyfriend, uh, who's a very uh, wonderful guitar player himself. It's a Danacaster. It's, it's served me well. It's been great. I, I actually played a, like a shell pink Strat on Emotions and Math, the record that I just put out. And uh, I fell in love with that guitar. It was too expensive for me. Uh, and it also wasn't for sale. <laughs> and I love that guitar and it served the record well. I think now it's kind of become a thing that, that it's my dream guitar. It is a wonderful, I don't know, the combination of shell pink and a, and a great Stratocaster. I think more than anything, that guitar itself just grabbed me. And now I've kind of been on this quest to find it again. I also played a silver tone that was lent to me by my good friend Nels Klein. I think that that is on um, the song You and I. The rest of it is with the Strat. Um, and yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter to me in terms of the guitar I'm using. It feels like, too, a lot of the intention that went into writing the record was that it could be played, the kind of things that I was ticking off in my boxes and, you know, making the record was that the song should be, be able to play it in different ways and still sound good. Um, well, the first electric guitar that I got was a Harmony Stratotone Jupiter, which I think was... I think the year on it was maybe 68, I'm pretty sure. I kind of grew out of it in a certain way and kind of leaned toward this solid body direction after a little while, but that guitar was really special when I got it. It was the first guitar that I ever really, you know, was my own guitar. Um, that, that was played on If and When, but everything was rather clean and kind of, um, yeah, it definitely got a little more distorted and overdriven uh, with this record. And I think, I think a lot of that um, has just been kind of learning, honestly, about where the amps work. And I mean, I'm such a novice still, but then it was kind of, it was my first kind of attempt at making a, uh, a record with electric guitar on it. And I wasn't going after a guitar sound, it was just guitar. Um, and now I, I have a lot more acute preferences than I, I used to, I think. of amps, I mean, I think it's an ever, it's a never ending journey in terms of finding the, you know, what you like to play through. And I think it's always going to be evolving for me. Overdriving an amp kind of naturally uh, is my, I like doing that a lot. And meaning that you just, you know, kind of just turning the amp up to the point that it just crumbles in that nice way. And that said, you don't always want to be blasting out your ear. I mean, this is like the classic kind of conundrum. And so I think I've, you know, kind of gravitated toward lower wattage amps because of that, the fact that you can just turn them up and it's still listenable and it also is crumbling all at the same time. Um, and for the record, I essentially had my guitar going through bigger amps and then reamped most of the guitar sounds with a, a five watt champ. So it's definitely kind of, that, that's been a, a presence in my scene for a while. Um, and now I, I've, I've been playing a, um, a reissue of the Deluxe Reverb from Fender for traveling, um, which has been great, and I like that amp a lot. I have so many um, amazing guitar players in my life, for sure, that have quite a bit of gear, for sure. And I, I don't have that much, really. I'm pretty minimal. Right now there's a tuning pedal and a boost pedal on my, on my entire pedal board, so. <laughs> For me, I think that there there are certain kind of attachments. You write certain songs and certain guitars or something like that that do feel kind of slightly nostalgic. But I don't I don't have a huge attachment. I don't think it feels like a means to get from A to B essentially, um, which I know isn't romantic, but <laughs> but is kind of how I feel for sure. Mm -hmm. 